Hey guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you so much for watching. You know, life as a psychic has not always been pleasant for me. A lot of people want psychic abilities in order to have that party trick or to appease others or to make themselves feel good. But in a lot of times when we have psychic experiences, it's not good. It's not fun. And most of all, some people could die. So I'm going to tell you a story today about what happened to me when I was, I think I was 16 years old. So we're back in 1982. And I was in a youth group associated to a church. How do you think that went for me? <laughs> yeah, fun times. So I've got a lot of stories. So here's one for you today. We got this notification that we were going up to North Keppel Island for a week. It was actually a 10 day trip, I think it was back in the day, because we're talking 40 odd years ago. So I want to show you where I'm talking about. I've got my iPad here and I want to show you where I was, okay? So here's Australia. Let me just come in. So this is where I live here in Brisbane. Now, just to give you an idea, up here is Cairns, and that's virtually a three-day drive away, and you're still in Queensland. So this just shows you how big um, Queensland is. It virtually goes for all this area here. New South Wales is here, and Victoria's down there, okay? So here I am in Brisbane, and we travelled north up here to the, sun, um, to the island. So if I zoom in... So you can now see where Rockhampton is, Townsville and Cairns, okay? So we went to Rockhampton. So now let me just go in again. So here's your poon. And here is, whoops, here are the islands over on the side. Let me just zoom in a bit more. Okay, so here's Great Keppel Island, okay? There's North Keppel Island. And the island I'm going to talk about today, Conical Island, Conical Island, is this tiny little one just here. So, let's go there. Back in the day, I got told, do you want to come for this trip up to the, um, up to the Barrier Islands? Much persuasion to my parents. <laughs> I remember, I had to defend this. I said I wanted to go. So they paid for the trip because I was only 16 and I three days before we left I had a dream. In this dream I'm on the beach behind me to my left there was a palm tree. Over here in front of me to my left was an overturned wooden boat like a little rowboat wooden but it was turned over on the sand and it was so vivid that I even saw the clouds in the sky <clears throat> so as I'm standing there <clears throat> bear with me because I talk all day and I'm still not over this thing that I've got with my throat right <clears throat> so as I'm standing there and I could feel the wind on my face that is how vivid this dream was out from the trees behind me comes this woman. She's got short, curly brown hair. I could, did not know her at all. I didn't recognise her. And she took off a t-shirt and she had on a yellow polka dot bikini. It was a white bikini with yellow dots all over it. And she, happily she ran into the water. And as I'm standing there, this shark, you know, it's a scene out of Jaws, this shark comes out straight in front of me. I saw the big fin with the waves. Um, how do they call that? Um, the waves coming up when the shark comes up. Sure enough, it gets this girl and pulls her under. And I can still remember the screams. I can still remember the splashing in the water. And I still remember the red in the water to this day so I woke up sweating absolutely scared absolutely out of my wits 
that happened three nights before I went on to this um, trip. So we had to catch a bus up to Rockhampton. And on the bus, I'm looking around frantically, looking for this girl with the short brown curly hair. And she wasn't on the bus. And I thought, well, this is good. This dream was just a stupid dream. It had no relevance, nothing. So we ended up getting up to Rockhampton. And they said, we're going to camp here the night. And in the morning, we're catching a bus over to Yapoon to catch the ferry to Great Keppel Island. And then we were getting another boat up to North Keppel Island, where we were staying for a week. So I remember being in the showers that night at like this base camp thing that we had. And in walks this girl with brown, curly, short hair. And I looked at her and I thought, man, I know you. I know your name. I know how old you are. I knew all this information about her. How could I possibly have known all this when I live a two-day drive away from her, hundreds or thousands of kilometres away, and I've never seen this woman before? So I didn't even talk to her because I was 16 and I was petrified because this is one of the biggest dreams that I'd ever had that was about to come true. So in the morning, she gets on the bus with us, as well as a couple of others who weren't on the trip from Brisbane. We get over to the ferry, we all get on this big boat and it takes us over to Great Keppel Island. And I remember standing out on the back deck looking down and watching all these huge fish because the water is crystal clear. And you can see like four foot fish swimming around like 10 feet below you. And I'm thinking, please, please, please just make this go away. Make this go away. I don't want it. So we get on this other boat and we go over to North Keppel Island. And I'm searching everywhere for palm trees because in this dream there was a palm tree behind me. And this island had no palm trees and I thought, great, I'm safe. There's no overturned boats. I'm safe. This girl is safe. So the first night there, one of the coordinators, he says, oh, look, we've got this little punt boat. You know, it's a little like a six powered engine boat. What we're gonna do for the week while we're here, every night, six people are going to go over onto Conical Island. So the first crew went over the first night, the second one went the second night, third one, fourth one, blah, blah, blah. I was in one of the last six people crews. And guess who is sitting straight opposite me on this little punt as we're going over the waves? slowly but surely getting closer and closer to Conical Island. I had my backpack, I had my sleeping bag between my legs and my pillow. We get over to Conical Island and it's this tiny little island and I swear you can walk around it in 15 minutes. And they say, okay, we're going to stay here on the beach. And I just stopped because there where they're saying we're going to camp were palm trees. And as I walked up to collect some firewood, there is the overturned wooden boat. And then up from there was some rocks. So it was, you go leave the sand and you get onto rocks that go down into the water. So that night, crazy bloody night, we had a big storm and we all got wet. <laughs> I remember that, we all got wet in our sleeping bags. Um, we had to pull each other up off the sand out of the water because the tide came in and we all got wet but in the morning I'm standing on the beach just looking around because everything's wet and I've got the boat to my left palm trees behind me to the left and out from the trees comes this girl in her t-shirt and she takes it off and there behold she's wearing a yellow polka dot bikini now, just to tell you what else was happening at this point, just up the beach from me to my right, where the rocks were, one of the guys decided to go up there and do some fishing. He had a fishing rod, and he's standing up on a rock fishing, so he's only about 100, 150 feet away from us. He's up on this rock, maybe 150 feet. Let's go 150 feet. So he's up off this rock. 
And this girl is about to run into the water and I had to say something at this point. Now, I hope that you agree with me. I'd have to say something, right? You'd think, say something, Linda. Do something. You know how this is going to end. So I did interfere with fate. And I did go up and try to stop this girl going into the water. I said, don't go in the water, please. I know you. Please don't go into the water. She starts screaming at me. Oh, what do you think you know? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's a typical 16-year-old. Um, and because of the little bit of yelling that was going on at this point, others came down. So now there's four of us. There's another two that came down. I said, what are you doing, Linda? And I said, well, you know, I've had this dream. Oh, yeah, another one of those. So obviously at this point I told them about other things that were happening with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, we know all about you, is what I was getting at this point. And I said, well, if she goes into the water, she's going to be eaten by a shark, and then who's going to be sorry then? And they're all like, oh, who cares, who cares? It's just Linda doing her whoopee thing again. So they didn't believe me at all. And then she tries to go into the water, and I'm physically now pulling her back by her arm. Don't go in the water. She's saying, get away from me, you freak. Who are you to tell me what I can and can't do? Get away from me, you freak. And then we're interrupted because the guy up on the rocks, he turns around and he says, I've caught a fish. And as we all look up, because hello, you get distracted, his rod's like this into the water. And you can tell it's a huge fish that is caught. And as we're looking at him, because the fish is jumping around in the water, it's a big fish, probably again four foot long like I'd seen when we were at Keppel this huge fin comes out straight in front of us it breaks water so there's a wave and then instantly we see this great white shark probably 15 12 15 foot long shark instantly it's up there and it attacks this other fish that's caught on the fishing line and the man's doing this with his rod and the whole rod goes in the water and there's all this commotion. Someone, not the girl, but it was a guy. Because there was about a 30 second silence after that. We all just stood there. And then I heard this guy say, Man, if you'd gone in the water, that would have been you. He wasn't talking to me, he was talking to her. The girl with the brown curly hair. I went back into my sleeping bag. Not one person spoke to me for the rest of that trip. It was very hard for a 16-year-old. Peer pressure. Gossiping. I could hear whispers, pss, pss, Linda, as so I could hear my name being said. Not making out anything else that was being said. Pss, 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 Linda. So I don't do this for the glory of it, guys, because there's no glory in being a psychic. If anyone says that they do it because it's a thrill, because it's fun, it's a cool party trick. If anyone tells you that they do this because it's worthy in any way, it's not. It's very scary it's humiliating it's embarrassing and most of all it makes us diminish our gifts so we don't want them anymore <sighs> you know that happened 40 odd years ago and look at the tears because I'm still remembering how I felt because of how they reacted to what I said You know, it's extremely important that I add here that when we have psychic visions, especially premonition dreams, because I've had a lot, so stay tuned because I'm going to share them as the more I do videos. The more that we share them, the more ridiculed, the more criticised, the more abuse that we obtain from people who we're supposed to be loved by. 
So if you do have these abilities and you're sitting there thinking, oh man, Linda's got the same thing I do. I do this too. I do this. Please know that you're not alone, guys. Please know that for some reason there must be a reason because everything does happen for a reason. Was I supposed to interfere that day is probably the biggest question I've asked myself over the years. What would have happened if I had not interfered? Could I live with that knowledge? Would it be guilt or simply understanding that psychic knowledge is in itself a treasured possession? I at that time as a 16 year old showed my true character that I help people that I will forego any mental or physical negativity that I get as a result in that quest to help other people. That girl, I hope she went on and had a great life and that she had a reason to be alive because ultimately we all do have a path and I hope and pray that at some point she has remembered that day on the beach with some weird girl with blonde hair and glasses who was swearing at her, don't go into the bloody beach, don't go into the water, there's a shark. Maybe I was the one who gave her that hope in what else is out there. There's a lot of possibilities, right? But ultimately, the biggest possibility here is, did I turn it off and not do it again? Or did I go against all those opinions from people who ultimately do not matter to me, including family, which is the the biggest one, especially as a 16-year-old? Because I can tell you right now, that pain that we get from family who disprove, disbelief, and ultimately criticize us for who and what we are, that's what hurts the most rather than that girl who didn't end up the way I saw in my dream. So as we go forward and I share more about who I am and what I am, I am more than happy to help anybody who wants to have psychic abilities. But it is most important that we learn why we want them because nights like this where we wake up having a horrified nightmare of seeing a person torn apart only 10 feet in front of us in the most grisly way form possible some of us are not emotionally prepared for that So it is good to ask yourself, do I really want the party tricks? Or is it best to leave it to someone who can emotionally deal with it? Food for thought, isn't it? But at least I've shared another one of my psychic dreams. Um, I've got a few, as I said. (laughs) I've got a lot. Wait till I tell you about Tibragagan. Mountain up on the Sunshine Coast that I climbed. That's a doozy might do that one next week hope you've enjoyed the story guys stay safe and i'll talk to you all soon bye